Alright, what's up YouTube? This is Josh from Boots Creation once again. Um, it is kind of early for me, um, but we're about to get started on a, uh, on a Jeep project. Not really a project, but Gotta has some stuff that needs to get fixed on it. I was just having to confirm whether or not something I had to buy for the Subaru, the project Subaru, is being shipped or not. Shipped or not. It's been three days, eBay, and it has not been shipped yet, so kind of getting irritated. So, but this is going to be another how to. Um, it's going to be if you own a Jeep, I think Wrangler, whatever it is, I, I don't know, I'm not a Jeep person. Um, and you need to do front brakes. And this would be more of an instructional video. Now the brakes are already off, but apparently there were some complications for the new ones where they were they were leaking. So I'm gonna take the ones that we have already, put them up, and see why they were leaking, and go from there. See you then. So here we are, working on my sister's 2001 Jeep Wrangler. Um, the issue she was having was her brakes would almost like, if she hit the brakes real hard, she would get back on the gas. And was, she thought her transmission was slipping, but in all reality, it was like her brakes were holding on for a split second and releasing. So, um, kind of took a gander on it because whenever I replaced the calipers, they were, they were seizing up. And uh, now we're replacing the lines. But the issue we were having is supposedly these lines, after they were put on, were, were leaking. So I'm going to uh, just do a quick fit and see see what I can do with it. Because there's a specific way you have to put this little square on because the factory piece is round. So let's get in. Let's get to it. The issue was supposedly this little square piece was leaking around the caliper. So we're gonna go to the other side and put it on and put some fluid in it and see if that fixes it. Alright, here's the problem spot. because um, the factory factory one is pretty much just round with a almost like a little groove cut out where it would go over. So I think it may have just been put on wrong, and that's why it was leaking. So I'm going to take this off. Also, I don't have two new washers, which if you if you do replace these, I highly suggest you replace these these little washers that come on it, because it, it can cause a, a leak just by not replacing them. But since I don't have them, I'm going to flip them over, because they are a little pushed in on one side. And we're going to make sure we get this in on the right side. And like I said, we're going to flop it over. So hopefully it'll seal. Alright, tighten all it back up. And we are going to leave this loose until we get the upper hose part put in. Right, here's the upper part of the hose. Um, like I said, there's that T30. Uh, of course, I can't get it out too tight too much. Alright, grab all of our tools, bring them to this side, which you should already have done. I just didn't do it. I don't feel like pulling with that T30. I'm gonna see if I can do it with the pliers. Nope, because it's too tight. It would also be a lot easier if you did this with um, 3 8 but for some reason the tools here, the only Torx bits are in half inch, which can cause a problem. Because one, way too big for this much area. Now it's 
sort of loose so I can switch to the pliers. Also, this vehicle is very rusty, so it's nothing if you're working with a rusty vehicle, it can cause you a lot of problems. Alright, so we got that out. Um, something you want to do is start this first because it's very easy to get these crooked and cross thread them. Alright, since it is started, it did thread down a lot of ways. So this is another reason I feel like it was probably put on wrong is the holes just don't quite line up like they should but this is where I'm going to put this Torx in hopefully because not everything's lining up perfectly on this like it should be This is where you want to finish off because basically you're trying to hold this hose so when you're doing your tightening it doesn't just rotate on you. It's also where you got to be careful to round off because as you can see here, maybe, as you can see right here, probably my dad or someone, whoever, someone working on this in the past has rounded it off. So you kind of want to go like little, little small adjustments. Until it doesn't turn anymore, which I'm running out of spots that aren't rounded off. Alright, it should be tight enough. Um, so now we just gotta get some fluid in it. Well, first you gotta tighten this bolt. Right now we got all that up there, and it's properly, you know, somewhat tightened down. You can tighten this down. And you want to get it pretty tight without breaking the, the bolt. And you just kind of get six or seven smacks here. Because it can't, this bolt can't hold a lot, but you overdo it. You can stretch it or break it. And then if you break it, you got to replace it. You either get an easy out to get the bolt out of the caliper or have to replace the caliper if you don't have an easy out. Um, you can take it to some machine shops. Some machine shops will, will get bolts out for you if you break them out. And I've never personally had any luck with easy outs. So it's usually what I have to end up doing. So just be careful not to break that banjo bolt. Right, so now on the top part we need to put fluid in it. Um, something like this we're kind of just fitting it for a leak. So you want to just put enough to hopefully see if you have a leak. And you do want to put this cat back on. I don't know how this brake system is, but a lot of them when you're, when you're doing your pumping on your brake side, you, it'll actually bubble it out and we don't want that. And so now I'm going to get some pressure. I'm going to get up on the uh, top side and hit the brake pedal. And we're going to be looking for a leak right around here. Because that's where it was supposedly leaking. So we'll see. As you can see here, it does start to leak. Um, 
And I'll explain pretty much this is what your, your leak will normally look like when you do not replace those washers. Um, I end up having, having a couple extras laying around that I end up swapping around with later. But the issue I was running into was on the passenger side, once we got the line on, it, it obviously was leaking all over the place. To, but the problem really was once that caliper got some pressure, it would completely lock up. But I get out of the car here in a second, kind of explain. You know, I felt felt around. I didn't really feel any, but I didn't see this video until now. But you can see on the back side where it ran, started run down. But yeah, that's that's the result of not using fresh washers. All right, so now we're going from replacing just the hoses to actually replacing the caliper because originally a while back the side the passenger side had gotten really hot and you could smell brakes and stuff like that and I had told the you know the owner that they were gonna need this caliper. Well they never replaced it. So when we were going to bleed in the brakes you could let off the brake and this one would actually you know I can move it now but it would actually hold for about five or six seconds before you could actually turn the rotor after letting off the brake pedal. So now we're going to replace this, actually both calipers, and I want to show you how. So let's get this camera a little closer. Let me try to get the camera a little focused. Alright, so you have two bolts that basically hold it all together, um, other than your you know, line here. And I'm going to try to get it all in here. Alright, so obviously you have the 14 right here on the, the line. What we're going to go ahead and do is crack it loose. And remember how I was saying before where you want to replace these washers that are in here? Well, the new caliper, they come with all new washers and a new bolt. So we can simply just let these ones fall down and forget they wasted so much of our time. Make sure they both fell down because they do have a tendency to stay on. Yeah, they're all there. Alright, so then you're going to need a one half for the calipers. This would be a lot easier with air tools, but I don't have any here. And I'm hoping they don't break. Alright, but now since we got them broke loose, I kind of do this the old fashioned way. Um, I still use an old C clamp to compress the caliper. A lot of people say it hurts them, but you know, I've never run into an actual issue with it. Try to get this brake line tied up here. And honestly, this is how I do brakes at work. Just because to me it's easier to go ahead and compress them while they're on the vehicle. And a six inch, or not, yeah, six inch clamp should be all you need. The only time you might need anything bigger is if you're like working on a diesel. So. These pads and rotors are fairly new, so we shouldn't have to do a whole lot. Um, all we're trying to do is get it to where it slides off the uh, caliper mount. So then we can go ahead and remove the rest of these bolts. Get this other one down here. It's also a little hard to get the view of both of them. Kind of a tight space here. Alright. So now that we've got it all compressed and you know it's ready to come off. Should just simply pull off like that. Now on this one they've got like a little spring design for this outer pad. You basically just have to 
kind of push down as you push out and it'll come right out see there you go and now the inner, inner one it usually has like a little lock inside the piston just pull them out and you set the other one to the side all right and on this case the way I'm going to do the, the inside of these ones is I'm going to go ahead and put this inner pad in there like so and then because of the way the outer one's designed you can actually go ahead and put it on the car just slips in like that say it slipped in like that it doesn't slip in yeah you just got like a little little piece on the bottom here like a little key just slip that in first and then just rock the top in all right now we're gonna put this new caliper on and here's where you might have to tap it a little bit just because of the way it's designed and you want to make sure the uh, caliper slides are all the way back which this one's not it's all the way forward So you want to pull the slides all the way back, trying not to pop the boots off that cover them, which is exactly what just happened for me. It's very easy to put them back on, now they just pop back on. Alright, so now we're ready to put it on. And because of the way the spring is on that outer one, just give it a couple taps and lock it in place. And then you just got to make sure that you rock the other side in. It's a fairly easy brake job. Just some of the mechanics of it kind of can turn into a pain. Alright, so now we got that in there. We'll go ahead and start this top bolt here. Kind of use it as like a pivot point for it. There we go. Now we didn't get a new bolt. Um, she's a pretty fine to use these. You don't ever run into an issue with those. All right, then you can wiggle this caliper in and out until you feel it grab threads on the bottom. Which this one grabbed threads right away, so not a big deal. Run it down. Also, I don't like using air tools on stuff like this because when you go to tighten them back up, you can break them very easily. Um, these bolts aren't that strong. Now you can replace them, put like grade eights in them, but it, it'd be kind of a pain to find it, find it the right size. So I just use hand tools. But usually I use my air tool or my hand tools, so it's easier to find. Easier to find. I don't have to worry about worry about them being rusted over. Now we just tighten these down. This is where you want to be careful because if you over tighten it, you can break these bolts in a heartbeat. Just want to give it a couple quick tugs. Same thing with this upper. We're gonna run it all the way down by hand. Now you can use a ratchet or something like that for this. That's fine. Um, like I said, I just don't suggest using air tools because they can kind of cause a problem. So you, as soon as it bottoms out you just kind of give it a couple good tugs and you're good. Alright now we're on the part of putting these lines back on. Oh it looks like I was, looks like I was wrong. It did come with new bolts. We're just going to keep those as you know backups because the ones that were on it were fairly new anyways and we're going to get this new banjo bolt out that comes with two new washers and we are going to simply undo what we did before with the brake line except 
now we have new washers. So we're going to put the one washer, go ahead and put it on the banjo bolt. And then we're going to run the banjo bolt through the brake line. Other washer on the other side. And then we're going to simply just put it back on. This is also another area why I do not like putting air tools on it because the banjo, banjo bolts are hollow. So if you put if you put any amount of excess pressure on it, you can only imagine a hollow bolt would break. And of course I have a washer drop and I can't find it. There it is. And my son's coming down, so. I'm recording a video. For some reason, this banjo bolt doesn't want to go in. So, we may have to end up trying to reuse the other banjo bolt. It's almost, almost like they messed up the threads. So we're going to stick with the new one. It got to a point where it stopped turning, so I'm going to slowly turn it with a wrench. This is not advisable, but I really don't feel like going to get another bolt. since it's most likely just a burr on one of the threads. This is definitely where you'd want to take hand tools because if it was an actual messed up thread, this you could easily... And I was right. It was just a burr on one of the threads. It's going in fairly simple now. Um, still not as easy as it should be, but it's a brand new caliper, so I'm not going to say much. It's like once it gets to where this will actually need to be positioned. You want to make sure it's locked with the flat spot against the caliper. Now a set of ratcheting wrenches would be okay on this. That's what I normally use at work. It's going to take two hours to get this one banjo bolt in. This is where you want to kind of try to keep it centered as you tighten it down. Switch to the box end. A couple pads to suit like tight. This doesn't move, and we're good. Um, now we can double check the tightness on the calipers on the top bolt. Tighten up a little bit. Right, that was good. And that's how you do a caliper. We're going to go over there and do the other side. And when we get back, it's like when we get back to, you know, recording, I'll show you how to quickly bleed this kind of brake system. Now this is just me going normal speed, um, doing less explanation, just kind of showing it 
how long it should take. Um, it's pretty much the same process on the driver's side. And it's a little bit quicker once uh, there's less explaining. Like it's not a, it doesn't take very long to do the job. It's just a matter of getting it done correctly. I kind of kind of brain farted. I uh, <laughs> didn't take the caliper bolts out yet. But also I had a pad, the inside pad was kind of seized onto the uh, caliper mount. So I had to kind of try to break it loose before I could get it to move to where I needed it to. where I tried to use a, uh, the new bolts that came with it, but uh, I don't know if they were just the, weren't the right thread or what was going on, but they, they wouldn't even attempt to start, as you'll see here in a second.
All right, so now we got all that on. Um, we're gonna do a simple way of trying to get these bled by just one person. Um, it's called gravity feeding. What you're gonna do is basically fill up the reservoir from top, and then you're going to crack open the bleeders. You're gonna do that on both sides. Basically, you're just waiting for fluid to be pulled down by gravity down the lines and let these you know, reservoirs for the pistons fill up. Once you start having fluid running out of both sides, you would then close them and feel the pressure. Now you would still have a little bit of air in the lines, or not really the lines, but in the, uh, in the piston here, like piston area here. That's when you'd most likely have someone else help you. You can kind of help, help them compress them. Um, that way, you can verify that 100% of all the air is out. So we're gonna crack, go ahead and crack both sides, and then uh, wait for fluid to come out of them. Okay, push. Alright, pump it. Hold it. Pump. Hold it. Pump. Hold it. Pump it. Hold it. I am. Pump it. Hold it. Pump it. Is it a full pedal? Nope. It's not? This is when I quickly realized that my wife was, by full pedal, she means that her foot was going down the length of the full pedal. That is not what I was listening for. I was waiting for, hey, does it actually have a brake pedal? Alright guys, that's how you replace the caliper and brake lines. Um, Nick, when you actually get a job like that, you want to make sure that it doesn't need calipers because or else you'll spend an extra hour going to get the parts and then come back just to replace them. Um, Overall, like even if you were had to do both of those, the caliper and the lines, all in one go, it should only take about 35, 40 minutes. That's pretty much replacing them, getting it all swapped out, getting all the air out of the lines. Um, it also helps if you do have a helper. That way, as soon as you get to the part where you need to bleed the brakes, you can have them pump the brake pedal. But I'm really sweaty. It's not that hard of a job. It's just. Uh, I think it's like 96 right now and this is Tennessee so it's very humid but uh, overall it's not that hard and if you have a basic set of hand tools you can do it all yourself and I uh, hope that was helpful and stay tuned for our next episode when we should start start 
getting some parts in for the WRX project. 